So I, I, I count down a bunch of those ex chocolate espresso beans that the welcoming committee gave me. So I'm going to be speaking really fast. Jeez, um, I don't even know where to start. Um, well, my, my talk is called Law Librarians. And uh, here, I'm going to angle this so I can see my screen. I have nine devices. I'm recording this on my phone. I'm recording that so I can post it later for other people that might be able to want to see it. If you want copies of my slides, email me. I'll give them to you. But the thing I am most excited about is my name badge. This thing is so cool. And here's why I'm excited. I collect all my name badges. And so for 30 years, I've been working in legal education for 32 years. And I've been Cali's executive director. This is my 25th year. I feel so old, but I'm not old. I am still young and excited about all this. And uh, so a couple months ago, I posted this picture to Reddit under uh, a subreddit called Mildly Interesting. <laughs> and it got 12,000 upvotes. Um, it was, it, no, 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 it's too funny, it's too funny. It got to the point where people were, were like, you know, making comments about individual things like, geez, I noticed you go to a lot of uh, librarian conferences, you know. <laughs> and so I made a little hidden object game about it, and people actually played it. <laughs> One guy, like, circled all the answers and posted the results back to Reddit. <laughs> you know. Uh, so it's obviously not just conferences. I've, uh, it's all my jury duties. Every time you visit somebody in the hospital, when you go to law firms downtown, you get security cards, um, tags that I get when I go to bars to prove I'm over 18 and I can drink. It's, <laughs> but this will have a prominent place when I get back. All right, so I'm the executive director of Cali. This is the Cali crew. There's uh, 10 of us right now. Um, I'm the one in the cowboy hat. And um, hopefully you know about Cali from our lessons, from our uh, e-books, from our conference, which coincidentally is going to be in Columbia, South Carolina this June, so you should attend, um, and of course Cali Awards. But I'm sort of here to talk about a whole other project that we've been working on for many years called uh, A to J, or Access to Justice Author. Um, but let me start by uh, the inspiration I got from, uh, is it Dan Kimball? Dan Kimball yesterday, uh, I should say Pastor Dan Kimball, um, and, and how he said, you know, this is, that there's, there's a lot of different ways to look at the, 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 the problem of access to justice, and, and one of them at least, and the best one I believe is, is opportunity. I love this definition, favorable juncture of circumstances, and a good chance for advancement or progress. I believe that to be true for law libraries and law librarians. Access to justice and opportunity here. And I, I guess I should very quickly start with, well, what, what is this access to justice problem? Well, if there's 10 people and they need legal help, only 50% of them are gonna get through the door. And this is people who are eligible for legal help. And this is because there are not enough legal aid attorneys. And we're not going to see new funding soon. So, okay, only half of them are in trouble, right? Well, it's much, much worse than that. The number is closer to 80%. Because remember, I said of the 10 people who show up, only 50% are eligible. A lot of them don't even bother or don't show up in the first place because they've given up in despair or for other reasons. And I'll actually talk about that a little bit later. Um, and there are even greater numbers of people that aren't represented on this particular chart that need legal help, don't qualify for legal aid, they make more than 125% of poverty, um, or they're even middle class of modest means, and lawyers are too expensive, and so cannot get assistance. The annual appropriations for legal services corporations is flat over its, over its history. And you say, well, at least it's not going down. Well, it is going down because the population has grown about 25% in that same time. So effectively, legal aid has dropped 25%, even from its high times, its halcyon, rich, golden years of 1979, right? 
There's endless numbers of reports coming out. You should read them all, they're fascinating, about the access to justice gap. Um, but this is the one that scares me the most. Although it doesn't scare me much because the folks at uh, LSC have done a really good job on the ground of making sure that there's bipartisan support and they will get their, their appropriation this year. But this is just a reminder that not everybody thinks helping people with their legal problems is something that's, that's worth funding. So why, why is John Mayer and why is Callie, the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Education, Legal Instruction, I can't believe I mispronounced the name <laughs> of my own organization, Legal Instruction, here to talk about access to justice. It sounds like misappropriation of funds. You know, am I, are, we, are we spending money on something that's got nothing to do with, with the mission or the goals of Cali? And I'll assure you, absolutely not. Again, this was an opportunity. And it goes back to 2000, 2001. I had been Cali's director for about seven years. And if you're in legal academia, you know that seven years is that magic time when, when faculty get to take a sabbatical. And so the board of directors said, John, you work really hard. Would you like to take a sabbatical? And I'm like, is that like a vacation? And they're like, oh, no, no, no. You, you go away, you think, you write, you, 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 you do great thoughts um, or interesting projects. You know, a little bit, not, not entirely out of, out of the realm of what Cali's about, but, you know, um, uh, some, something to re recharge the batteries and things like that. And I said, eh, okay. And at that time, Chicago Kent, and the uh, Legal Aid Foundation of, uh, of Chicago and, uh, and, uh, and uh, sorry, the Chicago Bar Foundation were working on a project to put up a new website for Illinois. Um, but they, they got a lot of money. They got some uh, Motorola money, they got some IIT matching grants, they got some IOLTA money, and they decided to do a study of self-representing litigants. This is 2001, way ahead of the time, I think. And they, I joined the project and went around to five different states and sat in courtrooms all day watching self-represented litigants or pro se's, I never know what the better one to use is, watch them stumble and fumble and be embarrassed and be, and be treated poorly and, and having to ask directions just to find the right place to go, the right form to fill out, how to fill out that right form. It was horrible. It was a hellscape of justice. And even the participants, the judges, the clerks, the others, knew that they were in a system that wasn't working very well, but felt like their hands were tied because can't give legal advice. All we can do is sort of say, here's information, all right? So anyhow, this was just, not just me. This was a bunch of design students from the Institute of Design and law students from Chicago Kent College of Law. And what they did was they published a, a report or a book called Access to Justice, Meeting the Needs of the Self-Represented Litigants. And in it, they had over 200 ideas, simple, complicated, impossible, unconstitutional ideas on how to fix the justice system. But God bless them, they were awesome ideas. And Kelly afterwards said, oh, sorry. You know, and so I, I like to say this was the first instance of design law and tech coming together, and the first one I know about. Um, and so Kelly, or I, came, on, came on against this, and I said, you know, there's more to be done here. And one of the things that popped out of this was how poorly the whole form system is. It sounds boring, <laughs> but, but I, I'm a tech guy, I'm a systems guy, I needed to find a way to address this. And it turns out that people filling out court forms, I, I'm using the 1040 here, but that's just a stand-in for, for all the forms that are out there. People make mistakes, people screw up forms, people fill out the wrong forms. Um, and what's behind the form is actually a decision tree. You know, if this, then this, lots of things. A form is a, the form is a mode of communication that the government and the courts prefer you to use. It's a language, it's form speak. Talk to me in the forms in standardized language and you, can, and, and you have a superpower. You know, screw up that language and, and you're not gonna get anywhere in what you're doing. So uh, the decision trees behind forms looked a lot like the decision trees behind Cali lessons. So what I'm saying is walking someone through filling out a legal document that comes to a conclusion or a decision or a filing 
was a lot like law faculty walking students through learning the law. Not exactly the same, don't get me wrong, but, 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 the, but the systematization of that was similar. And Cali knew a lot about that because we had written a program called Cali Author and gotten over a thousand, sorry, over 300 faculty to write a thousand lessons. And I said, you know, I think I have some familiarity in this space. And so, you know, I was seeing decision trees everywhere. There's decision trees everywhere, right? So we built a prototype, it looks like that. We, we designed it with like a person that's walking their way up to a courtroom off in the distance instead of a progress bar. That's important and I'll explain in a second. You know, behind that was a decision tree of whether or not, you know, you're in this county or out of this county, you make too much money, you don't, all kinds of things like that. You know, but we didn't want to just solve the problem for one decision tree or for one form, because there's thousands of them. No, there's hundreds of them, but there's 50 states. So there's thousands of forms that need to be automated or thousands of processes. And so we stuck the word author on that. That's one of the things that I, that's one of Cali's superpowers. We stick the word author onto everything we can. And it's not stupid, it's, a, it's because we want to scale problems. I don't want to just solve this problem today. I want to solve all problems possible and on into the future. And that was version 1.0, written in Flash, worked in any browser. That was a big deal in 2004 when Netscape and IE were fighting each other. Here's what we learned. Self-represented litigants are English as a second language, right? They're GEDs, they haven't finished high school, and they are stressed out because they got a legal problem. So, you know, you, you better not give them something that's going to require one mistake and you're out. You got to have lots of sort of uh, capability. What, what, what in, in aircraft uh, science, aircraft uh, engine or aircraft cockpit design, there's a word for it and it's escaping me, but it's um, the ability to, it's resilience, that's the word. You, you want to be resilient to mistakes. Um, legal processes are also legal education opportunities. People are learning about their problem as they're interacting with the system. Now sometimes that learning is painful and sometimes it's productive. Maybe we can turn this into a productive thing so that if they have to come back again, they know a little bit more, they're a little faster, a little more efficient. Maybe even they appreciate the system instead of hate it. Um, don't waste the user's time. So many times we've witnessed people getting to the bottom of a long process of filling out a complicated form and finding out that they weren't eligible because they, because the question was at the end. Oh, by the way, you know, do you make more than $25,000 a year? Yeah, you can't use this form. Use the, use the non-fee waiver form. It's like face palm. So if there's disqualifying questions, if there's things that are gonna indicate that the person's in the wrong place, put them at the front, at the top. Get them out of there fast, respect their time. You know, and that's got nothing to do with law or anything, just like smart design. But we had to learn it you know, through, through iteration. Here's the, one, here's the weird one, slow is fast. Um, if you use TurboTax, you might have figured that out, right? How many of you use TurboTax or something like that? Maybe you should ask the opposite. How many don't use some automated thing to, uh, to do their taxes? Ooh, man, I knew I'm in a room of law, law librarians. I can do it manually. That's right. So the deal there was we wanted to put one, we put one question per page, exactly one question per page. Or the, the, uh, if, you, if you do what people do today, where they form and you scroll and you, and you have lots of boxes, what happens is it, it feels like a little bit of a wall of text or it's overwhelming for people. If you slow them down and ask one question per page, they actually go faster because they're able to bring their focus onto that one question. Especially when the questions have, uh, what's the word, uh, are, are, a little bit are a little bit complicated. It's like, how many, how many kids do you have? Simple question, right? No. What they're actually asking is how many people under the age of 18 live in your house that you are responsible for, including your grandparents, your cousins, your neighbors, whatever it is that might have happened in the broken families or the extended families that you're dealing with. Because if you have more of them, then maybe your legal situation is different. The branch of the decision tree goes in a different way. So how many kids you have is a hard question. How much money do you make? Simple question. I just put down my salary. No. <coughs> Disability, TANF funds, WIC, uh, 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 Social Security, uh, veterans, benefits, things like that, all come into the equation. It's actually a very complicated question. If you make too much, you're not eligible for certain things. 
So you have to unpack these things and do them one page at a time. And the last one, and it's the one I, I don't have to worry about in this room, but I always throw it at my techie friends. Programmers are tech savvy, self-representing litigants are not. So a lot of the interfaces we design, I show it to programmer groups or, or guys, and they're like, oh my God, there's like, there's like a little, there's like a little avatar walking up the screen. How quaint! I get, I get so much grief for this. This looks so old and stupid, and I'm like, you're not the intended user. You know, you're, you're, you have a college degree and you program in JavaScript. Of course, you think that's silly looking, All right? There's even more to that design. You'll see the little box coming out of that person's head, and that's intentionally small. The authors, who are lawyers, wanted to say, well, I got a lot to say to this person before we start this form. So, wall of text. And we say, people don't look at that. And so we gave them a little box and said, put it in that little box. And they're like, well, it doesn't fit. It's like, exactly. <laughs> make it shorter, make it fifth grade level. All right, if you need a couple of them, then make another screen, one screen at a time. But, we're, but I really fought against having a scroll bar in that little box, because that's death. To this interface. All right, so how did we do this? We got some money from Legal <laughs> Services Corporation and National Center for State Courts and the and, uh, uh, State uh, SJI and a whole bunch of others, um, as well as Cali money. But the LSC has been doing TIG grants, technology initiative grants, since 2000, 65 million bucks, over 7,000 grants. A lot of that money, we didn't get 65 million dollars. I think we pulled in about a million over the last 15 years. Um, but a lot of that money went to legal aid organizations to pay f legal aid attorneys to spend time taking their subject matter expertise and turning it into A to J guided interviews or into automated forms. Uh, Law Help Interactive was set up as a national single location to put those forms because it's, it was efficient and uh, economies of scale and that's where most, most, not all, most of the A to J author forms live. Over the last 15 years, they've automated over a thousand forms. They've been used over five million times, and they've resulted in over three, three million documents. We are bigger than LegalZoom. I don't have LegalZoom's 200 million dollars, but you know they 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 have less than two million customers over that same amount of time. So um, I once made the joke that we're Legal Aid Zoom, and just for yucks, I registered the domain name LegalAidZoom.com. And within a week, I got a cease and desist letter. <laughs> Seriously, for trademark infringement. <laughs> so it's not just legal aid. The New York courts, family courts, automated about 30 or 40 forms. Um, and they survey their users and say, so how'd you like it? And they have 40,000 comments like this. Things like, a very useful and time-saving tool, a well-thought-out program. I'm now going to break my arm patting myself in the back. I am very thankful for your online program. Without it, I had no way of actually defending myself. The DIY program saved me from getting anxiety or panic attacks. Thank you. Oh my god, I'm almost crying when I read these, every time, because there's thousands of those. And that's exactly what we were going for, poor people or you know, self-representing people who, who, who needed help. Um, and by the way, the clerks at the New York courts love us or love that. Because now they don't have people, angry people, upset people coming up to them and saying, I don't know what to do. And you have to help me. And they're like, we can't help you. No legal advice. They say, there's a kiosk. Get it started. Let me know if you have any questions. And usually the people come back and say, I'm ready to file. So, you know, it brings joy to my heart that I bring joy to the hearts of law, of court clerks and, and I hope court law librarians as well. So we haven't been letting moss grow on, our, grow on us. Uh, version 5 in 2015, we rewrote the whole thing, not in Flash, but in JavaScript. Why? So that it would run on iPhones. Curse you, Steve Jobs. Oh, sorry, you're dead. Um, <laughs> version 6, we, went to, we, we made sure that there was a mobile version so that it would work on phones or things like that. Version 6.1, we added our own document assembly. The old version only dumped its data to Hotdocs, and then Hotdocs had to do it. Inver but Hotdocs is Windows only, and law students, which are important, and I'll explain in a second, 50% of them have Macs. And so we needed a web-based Mac and Windows-friendly version for document assembly and it made training simpler. 
Version 6.2, we finally solved, uh, you know, we, we thoroughly solved our ADA WCAG 2.2. It's now super friendly with screen readers, um, and, and we learned a lot by doing that. But the whole goal of the interface, and I don't have time to demo it or show you, was that lawyers can code, it's not really coding, it, lawyers can code this without a programmer. And so this scales. You know, every time a lawyer or, a pro or an organization with subject matter expertise, I, I call them verticals, you know, domestic violence, housing, um, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever the, the law vertical that, you're, that you, your nonprofit or that your group is interested in, you know, can bring their subject matter expertise and create the decision tree in A to J author and, and off you go without having to be a programmer. So again, well, wait, 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 I still didn't answer the question. Why is the Com Center for Computer Assisted Legal Information, um, Legal Instruction doing access to justice? Well, it turns out that, we, that, that this is a great tool for training law students. If you automate a form, you have to know the law underneath it. And so making law students go out and do the research to figure out what that decision tree is, you know, is something that is amazing. And we've uh, worked with over 20 schools. It's been taught in 20 or 5 or 30 different classes. Um, and, we're, and we're adding capabilities and features to the website, like sample exercises and training materials. A lot of our training is up on YouTube to make it easier, because I think this is the future, not just of legal education, but of all law practice. Right? People are going to want to use the automated form, at least to get started. Maybe, not, maybe they can't solve the entirety of their problems. Or maybe, and, and even lawyers are going to say, before you show up, you know, go hit my, my website you know, and, and do my intake. We have a half a dozen uh, or a dozen legal aid organizations that use ADJ Author for intake, because intake is complicated. What's the nature of your problem? How much money do you make? Are you, you know, do you qualify? Where are you in the process? Do you have a, a letter or something like that? All sorts of things that you don't have to waste a lawyer's time, or that if you like sort of get your act together before you show up, things will go much faster and smoother. I'm all for efficiency, you know, but, but sometimes, Efficiency can also be cold, and so there's there's punctuated moments of automation that can be followed by empathic moments of mindfulness, where the lawyer or the system holds the person's hand, and, and there's nothing wrong with automation and mindfulness to be to be sort of coupled together, that that makes up the sort of whole arc of solving a, or addressing a legal problem, right? I am not one of those people that says this is going to put all the lawyers out of business. I'm the type of person that says, this is going to make lawyers better, faster, stronger, and maybe have more time to do empathic, mindful practice and, and practice and uh, address people's uh, human needs. So underneath those decision trees is the law. This is, this is complicated. This is difficult. Turns out law students are not the perfect people to automate these processes. Do you know why? They have no expertise in those processes. We need subject matter experts. So, but if we pair them up with mentors, law, law student projects can get published, you know, back to, uh, with legal aid uh, project, with legal aid's help, you know, that actually help people out. Um, we now offer that as a service. A to J author is where authoring gets done. A to J.org is where hosting gets done. It's free for anybody, includes document assembly, and it's completely free for courts, legal aid, Law libraries, I don't, I, we're giving it away for anybody that's doing access to justice work. Um, and uh, we've recently gotten a lot of interest from courts because all of a sudden the courts are waking up. For years they wanted to just deny the SRLs and say, man, they're just a problem. But the judges have had enough of it. And when the bar associations complain, you're taking away my business, the judge will say to them, are you going to help me? I got, I got 90 SRLs standing in front of me who need help. Are you going to provide some pro bonos? And the Bar Association says, there's not enough of us, or no. And so the judge says, then shut up. This is not unauthorized practice of law. I'm, I'm not saying this matter is settled, but it, that, that's where the battle lines are being drawn. You know, it's too much of a critical problem. So from A to J author, you can post to A to J org or to the Law Help Interactive. If you're working with a legal aid organization, go for it. But we're not certainly the only game in town. As a matter of fact, since we've been doing this, there's been an explosion of people 
who think that there is gold or that there is opportunity in this space, right? So this one is Hello Divorce. It's nothing but California divorces. And lo and behold, they have a decision tree behind the whole thing. And, you know, they have a whole navigator thing. It's actually, it's a wonderful website. It's amazing stuff. Now, they charge for this, but they charge much less than a lawyer. Interesting ideas. You may not or may not have heard of Upsolve. They're a LSC uh, TIG grant as well. They do nothing but bankruptcy, Chapter 7 bankruptcies for poor people. Um, you know, people who are so poor, they can't even go bankrupt because, because there's nothing there to, like, pay back the lawyer for that. And so for a very small amount of money, they, they, they have to charge, I think, a little bit, but they've automated as much of the bankruptcy process as possible. Um, you've, cur you've, of course, all heard of LegalZoom. If you listen to NPR, they're constantly advertising in there. They're the most known legal brand in the world. And, but they tend to be up at the high end of the, of the spectrum, right? They're up at uh, LLCs, wills and trust, intellectual property, and they really want to funnel you to an attorney. So they're an they're a automated form that acts as a loss leader to a, to a referral service. But still, awesome, right? Oh, a slide out of thing, that's, the, uh, that's UpSolve's um, bankruptcy steps. There's, now, all those were verticals that solve one problem there's also a lot of horizontals in the space now, and which is to say tools like A to J Author that could be used to automate any number of things. Doc Assemble is one of them. It's a free open source expert system, so is A to J Author. Um, it's, it powers a website called community.lawyer where you can pay to host materials. They have a different approach. They think law students or lawyers should learn to program in Python or YAML, yet another markup language. Um, we, 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 we kindly disagree on that approach, but you know, I'm, I'm delighted that there's more people in, the, in this space because uh, you know, didn't they used to say in a small town, one lawyer in a small town is broke, two lawyers are rich, right? So it, it sort of validates our methods and our approach to this. There's of course commercial operations doing the same thing, selling them to law firms. Neota is uh, the one that I know about and, and many more that I, I, I just wanted to grab a few. And then, and then there's the whole chat bot, voice bot, Alexa bot, you know, sort of world. So DocuBot is one, LawDroid is another. Um, we've done some experiments with talking to Alexa, but, um, you know, after two or three interactions, it feels like you're stuck in a Comcast phone tree. You know, I don't know that people are going to go through 100 questions on Alexa. You know, and I don't know, and, uh, you know, and how much of, uh, how much, how much of your private legal information do you want Amazon to know about, you know? Uh, maybe everything, because they can sell you something, right? So, this is opportunity for law librarians and law libraries. And here's, here's my first evidence of that. A couple years ago, we did a little study. We looked at those thousand or uh, guided interviews that had already been created. We looked at the most common things that they represented, these areas of law, and then we mapped it on a, on, a, on a crude graph, Illinois, you know, each state is represented by a line and each area of law is by a column, and said, oh my gosh, 82% of the forms, 81% of the forms are still not done. This is the low-hanging fruit. We don't have expungements across all 50 states. We don't have uncontested divorces or domestic violence temporary restraining orders. We've got a sparse, we've got Swiss cheese of that. And so there's still plenty of work to do. Now in the meantime, a lot of people are like, ooh, Artificial intelligence, blockchain, you know? And they're running away from the useful but boring stuff that is document assembly and decision trees. You know, uh, that's, that's, not, that's, 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 that's my problem, I'll figure that out, right? But you law librarians have already figured out a lot of this. This is opportunity. I just did a little bit of searching for libguides. My gosh, and there's tons of libguides for SRLs. Some of them very specific, some of them very broad, you know, all over the place. You've already dealt with the fact that people walk into your law library and say, I need help, and you're like, I feel so sorry for you. Well, at least I'll, you know, produce some materials, you know, because, they're, because you want to have a standard way or you at least want them to be able to find it. The problem is these are, these are actually kind of hard to find unless you're looking for them in a particular way. The finding problem is huge in this space, and I think you can help us with that. These are just a couple that I grabbed, Creighton, this was Utah, Creighton, you know, and, and I want to try to convince you that this isn't just about helping poor people. This isn't just uh, charity work at all. 
right? What I mean by that is it's the ADA all over again. Right? When, when the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed, we were, we were like, you're right, we got to do this, but oh man, this is, this is hard, I got to do all this work, I got to spend all this money you know, for less than 1% of the population. I'm, I'm sorry I had those thoughts, but I did. And then when we did it, when we did ADA stuff on our websites, I'm like, wow, this is like, this is making our website better for non-ADA people. This is making our, our places easy for people like when you break your ankle or when you get old. I'm going blind and deaf as I get old. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a customer of ADA, you know, in, eventually, you know. And, and so it, it's, it's another, it's a situation where if you do access the justice work, it's not just going to help poor people, it's going to help law students and lawyers and everybody else get better access to the law, right? So, so here's where I get a little depressing, and, and a small dip, and then I'll finish up. Um, Rebecca Sandifer did a lot of work on, and, and basically uh, discovered that a big part of the access to the justice gap is that Americans don't even know when they have a legal problem. Or worse, they know they have a legal problem, but I don't think lawyers can help them. All right? Our profession, the, that is to say the legal profession, is not well loved. Has anything more obvious ever been said? <laughs> How people handle civil justice situations. Look at that big red space. Self-help, that's opportunity. But look at that purple space, 16%. Do nothing. Throw your hands up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore it and hope it goes away. La, 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 la. It doesn't, right? Selected reasons for not going to any formal advisor, that means lawyer, for assistance. So look at the top. I don't think that I need advice. What? <laughs> of course you need help. It wouldn't make any difference even if I went. Those are the top two. That, that, to me, that was the scariest graph in this whole thing. And down below it is cost too much. We know that. Don't know where or how. Okay, that's the finding problem. I can do something about that. And it's too stressful. Ah, yeah, I mentioned that in the form design problem. So unfortunately or fortunately, that's where I've been spending all my time, on the bottom three reasons why people don't go to lawyers. Rebecca's work was so seminal, so, so revelatory, you know, they made her a MacArthur genius just last year. It's like totally deserved. And I was delighted that MacArthur, you know, they hadn't, get, they hadn't ever recognized over the 10 or so years they've been doing this, the, the justice or the access of justice space. So opportunity, you betcha. If you do access to justice, you're not just helping you know, SRLs, you're helping students and lawyers. A to J is hot, 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 hot. There's money, there's grants, there's partners. There's, we're in the tooling stage. What, what I've just shown you of 10 years of work is just the beginning. There's all kinds of people doing all kinds of, kinds of cool things. And they need some smart people at the table to give us good advice and, and that. It is a, it is a target-rich environment. I love that term. It's actually a military term, I'm sorry, but I'm a, I do like to play games. Um, and, and let me expand on that. It means that we need more help in guiding, navigating, and finding research. There's, there's almost, a, there's many, many, many verticals that are, that are not well uh, represented. Uh, domestic violence, immigration, my goodness, housing, you name it. There's all sorts of problems with curation, taxonomies, and cataloging of these things. There's now thousands of these things out there, and it's a and it's a it's a mess in terms of being able to find it because of jurisdiction or or subject area or where you are in the process. And we still need places, physical places, like libraries, for seminars. You know, because it's not all e-filing yet. Let me expand on that. We need places for workshops. We need places where the kiosks are. In Illinois, they made sure there's a computer in every public library <coughs> in the state that know, and the librarian knows about Illinois Legal Aid Online because they've automated the most forms of almost any state. Um, you know, we need lawyer hour at the library or seminars, you know. And the last thing is community. And boy, you people do community better than anybody. I mean. Seal, you, you, how, how many committees do you have? <laughs> and, and I don't, and I'm, I'm, I joke, but I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that, at that. And, and, and that shows that you know that many hands make work light. And that's what this situation is. So it's all about community. 
at the intersections of legal education, technology, courts, and law practice is you. You can, you can do something and make, make the world a happy place with that. So thank you. I'm supposed to stand for questions? Yeah, do you guys have any questions for John? And I know I went a little over time, so um, you know, I'll be, uh, we've got a table out there, um, and I'll hang out if you wanna talk afterwards. But any questions right now? Sure, John. Um, if you were interested, if we were interested in, in getting involved with something like this, what's step one? I mean, what do we do? We reach out to you? Do we? Sure. <laughs> Email me. Or go to a to j dot author dot org and sign up for an account. And then, um, you know, go to one of our sample exercises and work your way through it. Or go to your local legal aid or your court, see what they're doing. Maybe there's already a project or, or a process, uh, something in process. Actually, ask us. We might know about it. We're trying to. I'm trying to figure out a way to catalog that. You know, to, to start gathering that all in one place. You know, I wish there was like people that did things like that. Do you know anybody? I would pay them money. Contact me if you're interested in being a cataloger of access to justice. Um, I, I I would like to just do a project with that. Consulting. That, I can't pay you a lot. <laughs> Are you guys still working with uh, law school clinics? We're trying, but clinics, the clinic folk want to teach students empathy and mindfulness, not automation. You know, they think that if, you're, if the students are working on computers, then they're not learning to be lawyer, uh, counselors, you know. Um, but, but schools are opening, um, you know, entrepreneurship and innovation clinics and things like that. And, and that's, the word clinic there is getting stretched. It's more, you know, programs, processes, centers, and things like that. And some of those, unfortunately, are being captured by Shiny. You know, they don't want to do boring document automation. They want to do blockchain, you know, and, and natural language processing and stuff. So, but yeah, we're, we're working with anybody who will, who will talk to us. So will you join me in thanking our keynote? Thanks. Okay.